I want to ask some questions specifically around race, particularly African Americans. They continue to lag behind and um, are experiencing just crisis outcomes across the state. What are you doing specifically um, with racial or ethnic um, approaches to education? Or is it a taboo subject, um, difficult to have, and lumping all of the races together? Is it, is it fair to talk about race specifically, African American, Latino, et cetera? And if so, what are you doing to address those, those uh, particular um, outcomes? So I think we have to talk about race. I mean, we can't have anything that's taboo or off the table. Are those conversations difficult or challenging? Absolutely. But if we're trying to get to the core, the essence of what our issues are, when you talk about the achievement gap, by definition, that's the gap between white children and African American Latino children. So we have to put those conversations on the table. As you and everyone here knows, um, I wish there was an easy answer. There isn't one. Let me tell you a number of things I think we have to do to close the achievement gap. And when you look at dropout rates in the black and Latino community, they're often 40, 50, 60 percent. We're devastating entire communities. There's just nothing out there for them. So again, there's this tremendous sense of urgency. I'll start with a couple things I already said. I think it all begins with great early childhood education. If we can get those young children into a great program at two and three and four years old and have them enter kindergarten ready to learn and ready to read with their literacy and socialization skills intact, I think that makes a huge difference. I think making sure the students have access to a challenging and engaging curriculum. In so many of our minority communities, things get dummy down. Students drop out not because it works too hard, they drop out because it's bored. And every time you raise standards and engage children, graduation rates go up and more students go to college. And this dumbing down of expectations is something that I think has been uh, insidious for a long, long time. Third, I don't think we've done enough to think about how we get our most effective, our most talented teachers and principals to the underserved communities, be that inner city, urban, or rural. And this work is not for everybody. It's extraordinarily difficult. But in many communities, there have been incentives for the best talent to go to the wealthier communities and no incentives for the best talent to go where you need it most. Um, one district that's done this, I think, as well as anyone in the country, is Charlotte-Mecklenburg in North Carolina. Where they are systemically identifying their highest performing teachers and principals and then moving them in mass to their lowest performing schools, which are largely in the minority community, and getting some pretty significant results. That's one thing to look at. Third, this idea of wraparound services, great after-school programs, great mentoring programs, Dance, drama, art, music, chess, robotics, debate. We need all those types of things to be the debate. And I say all the time, you know, I didn't necessarily go to high school every single day because I love biology. I wanted to play in a basketball team. And to do that, you had to do well academically. So for me, it was sports. For someone else, it's band. For someone else, it's drama. For someone else, it's art. But we need that menu of options. I worry about those things being cut in tough economic times, and then students losing, losing incentive. The final thing I'll say, and I'm out traveling the country working on this, is we need more teachers of color coming into the profession. And we have a huge story where, again, it's not just a racial gap, you look at minority males, less than 2% of our teachers, less than, one of our 50, less than 1 in 50 teachers nationally is a black man, less than 1 in 50 is a Hispanic man, then we, we wonder why young boys of color struggle, so many are growing up in single parent households. So, a litany of things we have to do, I probably missed 12 others, but we have to put these tough things on the table, we have to talk about them, in every way possible we have to challenge the status quo. The final thing I'll say is that when I grew up in the south side of Chicago, and I'm that old, but you know, 25, 30 years ago, my friends actually could drop out and get an okay job. They could go work in the stockyards and steel mills and buy a home and support their family and you know, do okay. Those jobs are distant memory from a bygone era, so the stakes now are higher than ever before. We as a country have been very slow to act, and we have to move with a much greater sense of urgency than we 